All right, so I'm gonna do a demo today on how you can use N hair to create eyebrows for a character. So in order to get the N hair to work, you need to start from some curves. So um, we need to create curves that are going to then generate the hair for the eyebrows. To create those curves, one method that works quite nicely is starting from paint effects. So the way we do that is we need to first select our character and go to the modeling menu. And once we are there, we can go up to this generate tab. I'm using Maya 2017, by the way. So um, <clears throat> if your menu looks a little bit different, it's possible you may have a different version of Maya. So um, go to this generate tab and first say make paintable. Um, and also to get this to work, you need to have good UVs for your character. So if your character's not already UV'd, this is not going to work. You got to go back and do those UVs first. All right, once we've made this paintable, we can go to generate and get a brush. And I'll go down to the hair tab. <clears throat> now, um, we have eyebrow black, eyebrow blonde. Either one of these will work just fine. Um, the color of the brows is not actually going to be determined by these paint effects, but it's going to be determined by the end hair later on that we apply to the curves that we're creating right now. So just select one of those, <clears throat> then go to our character, and to start with I'm going to make this brush size a little bit larger. So hold down B and click and drag, and then we can paint on some eyebrows. <clears throat> I'm going to make this brush size a little smaller now, and you really want those brows to kind of taper off at the end. So as long as your brush is a little smaller, you can kind of paint in that taper. Maybe make it a little larger and make it a little thicker there at the start. <clears throat> then hit Q. And, <clears throat> excuse me. So what's been created here are we have all these different strokes for the paint effects. And currently it's set up that when you move the underlying mesh, it stays glued right to the surface through those strokes. Um, we're actually not going to be using these strokes, however, for our rigging, but rather later on, I'm gonna use a wrap deformer to attach the eyebrows back to the face. So we need to turn these into curves. Currently, if I wanted to like adjust an individual hair, I would not be able to do that. So to convert these to curves, go to modify, convert, and say paint effects to curves. So now we have all of these individual curves. I don't need these strokes anymore, so I'm gonna delete those. And now that we have these curves, we can go in and do a little extra trimming on the hair. So if I wanted it to taper a little bit more at the end, at this point I have control over how that's gonna look. All right, so something like that. <clears throat> now, um, I'm going to go up here and just make it to where my polygons are not selectable by hitting that button. And then I can select these curves. Currently, they're all in different groups, so just to organize things, I'm going to hit Command-G or Control, um, Control-G. <clears throat> and then I can delete these groups here. And I'll just rename this group. This is Brow... what is that? L group because it's the left side and I'm also going to rename these curves since these are not very good names so I select all of those shift select and go up here um, <clears throat> to find this tab you have to hit this little triangle and it looks like this at first if you hit this button you can go down to rename and give them all a name I'll call these brow come on call these brow L curve and it automatically renames all of them and numbers them as well. <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate these over to the other side as well. So control D to duplicate, set the scale X to negative one on that group. Um, the reason that works setting the scale X is because the pivot point for that group is down at the origin. So it's just flipping right along that pivot point. And let's rename this. This is the right side. And I'm also going to automatically rename each of these curves as well. These are brow R curve. <clears throat> so it automatically renames all of those. If you want a little bit of randomization from one side to the other, you could go in and spend a little time 
adjusting some of these curves so it's a little different from one side to the other. <clears throat> so next what I'm going to do is turn these into hair. Currently, if I were to take a render, we're not going to see anything. And that's what it looks like right now. I'm just using Maya software for this because I'm not really too, uh, I'm not really interested in showing you how the shading works for N hair. I might do a demo on that a little later. But for now, I'm really more interested in just getting the rigging and kind of the general shape of the hair to look right. So to turn this into N hair, we can select both of these groups, go to our effects menu, and go to N hair, assign hair system and give it a new hair system. So now inside each of our groups, all of our curves have been placed inside follicles. And we have this kind of dummy group here that we don't need, so I'll delete that. We have these output curves also, which we actually do not need either. Uh, if I were to hit play, you can see those hairs are all falling down and looking pretty silly. So we don't need this nucleus to be simulating. So I'm going to click on our nucleus and just turn off enable. And now when I hit play, those eyebrows just stay static. Um, again, we don't need these output curves. They're kind of there, there to help you visualize how your simulation is running, but we're not going to actually be simulating this hair. So I'm just going to delete the output curves. We do need the nucleus, however. I'll call this brow nuke and call this brow hair sis. It's a brow hair system. All right. <clears throat> um, the hair is not present yet still. If I were to take another render, it's not going to look any different. In order to get that hair in place, we need we actually need to apply paint effects again. The paint effects are going to be a little different this time. They're not based on that brush, but it's uh, just paint effects that are driven by the end hair. So grab our hair system, go up to end hair, and we're going to assign paint effects output to hair. Hit enter. <clears throat> it comes in super, uh, super bushy like this at first. I'm just going to rename this as brow pfx paint effects and go into my hair system and you want to go to this hair system shape and just take your hairs per clump way down also you can see it's still the hairs aren't exactly on top of those curves so if you take your clump width and bring it down to zero now all of the hair for the paint effects are going to be just right on top of the curves so if i were to hide those curves you can see that is what the brows look like and they'll finally, now that we have the paint effects, show up in our render. You can see it's right there. It looks very blonde. So you can go to your uh, hair system, go to that shape again, and scroll down to this shading tab if you want to darken it up a little. Um, it's also really, really shiny. The specularity tends to be too intense at first. You can actually uh, kind of sharpen up that highlight so the highlight's not as spread out, so it'll actually look a little less shiny. If you take your specular power and increase that number, and if we take another render, you can see now it's looking a little bit darker, so a little bit more realistic. I mean, you know, it just depends on what you're after when it comes to this shading. Again, I'm not going to go too in-depth into this shading, and actually, I usually don't even use the shading here in the hair system shape. I tend to render using RenderMan, and there's kind of a different process for shading inside RenderMan. It doesn't use any of this stuff right here. So um, that's working, although currently, I'm just going to turn back on polygons, currently there is nothing that's connecting the hair to the mesh. So to get that hair connected back to the mesh, we need to use a wrap deformer. <clears throat> so um, you're going to wrap deform the curves. All right, so our curves are inside these follicles. They all got placed in there automatically when we assigned the hair system and created the hair system. <clears throat> so what we can do is uh, select both of those groups and then select our mesh and create a wrap deformer. So go to, you can go either to modeling or rigging. The deform tab is in both of those menus. Go to deform and create a wrap. All right, and it'll just take a moment. And if we select our mesh and go to the channel box, we should see that we have all of these wrap outputs. And if I go to my faces again, 
we should see when we move our geometry, nothing happens. Wah, wah. Um, why? Oh, it's because I'm on frame 21. I gotta go back to frame, Z, uh, to frame one to get that to work. So let's try that one more time. And yep, now we're seeing that our hair is following the mesh as we move that around. So that is how you can use N hair to generate eyebrows. Now this is kind of funny. You see, as I render this now, her face has disappeared. This is a common error that you get with wrap deformers. Um, it, it'll sometimes just automatically turn off the render stats for your, for your underlying mesh. So all you need to do is go to the attribute editor and okay take a moment come on go to the attribute editor go to the head shape and you can see all of these render stats have been turned off so just turn back on cast receive primary visibility reflections refractions and ta-da our character is back and everything is rigged correctly the eyebrows show up and you can spend some time shading those to really make them look pretty nice so that is how the, uh, that is how you can use N hair and a wrap deformer to create eyebrows for a character.